Let's talk about the defaults for Access. Hi, this is Crystal. As soon as I install Access, I make certain changes. To get to the Access defaults, click on File, Options. Starting with the General tab, the default file format for your blank database. Now, if you're using Access 2007 or Access 2010, I wouldn't suggest 2003 as a default. Better to have a blank 2003 database stored and open that to put objects into. Default database folder. I often change this depending on what I was doing. The last thing I was doing was documenting templates, so I changed my default database folder so they would just go there. Your username and your initials. Current database. This is where you are going to set the defaults for just whatever is your current database, not your general defaults for everything. So in the current database, what is the title of your application? This is always a good thing to set. If you have an icon, which most of you probably don't, but if you're distributing something, you may. What form you want to start when you first open the database. I always make sure display status bar is checked. Document window options, overlapping or tabbed. I often come in here and I switch this. At first, when tapped documents came out, I thought, you know, hey, this is really, really great. But now I've kind of gone back to overlapping windows. Whether or not you want to use special keys in Access, so if you want to be able to press F11, for instance, to get to the database window, I always leave this checked, but then again, I don't lock databases down. Compact on close, my advice, do not ever check this. I only compact a database when I open it right after I back it up. This is a volatile process. While it might seem handy to just compact it on close, this is okay if it's just a front end and you can always replace that front end and you just don't want someone's front end to get bloated, that's perfectly fine. But if they've made any queries, for instance, they're going to lose them if you replace it. Remove personal information from file properties. Yeah, this might be something to consider. I'm not going to go through everything. Display navigation pane. I always do this, but once again, I don't lock my databases down. Ribbon name. You can set options for defaults, uh, default shortcut menus. Name autocorrect. As you can see, I have unchecked track name autocorrect. However, I need to check it in order to to uncheck perform the name autocorrect. Then I'll uncheck this again. Name autocorrect is sometimes called, you know, not by Microsoft, but by those who use Access, name autocorrupt because it can cause problems. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the rest of these. Let me go to data sheet. The default data sheet, whether you want the column widths to be one inch or maybe something wider or something narrower, what size you want for the default font, the weight, you can change that here. Object designers, the default field type. So when you make a new field, what do you want the field type to default to? Text is fine. I changed the default from 255 to 50. Now, it always used to be 50, but in the later versions, Microsoft has gone to 255, and I bump it back down to 50. The default number field size used to be double precision. Now it is long integer, which I think is a much better default. Auto index on import create used to have stuff in there. Code, num, id, key, I removed them. I do not want access auto indexing anything. If I want an index, I will specify it. Show property update options buttons. Okay, I always uncheck this. That's just kind of a nuisance because many times you'll set up a table, then you'll go back into the table and, for instance, change field description. 
questions to fill them out. Do you want to have that little lightning bolt every single time you make a change? Well, I don't. So I remove that. Query design, show table names, output all fields, eh, don't check this one off. There might be temporary circumstances where you may choose to do it as a default forever. I wouldn't suggest. You can set your font and your size. Now SQL Server compatible, this is another gotcha. Sometimes people will check this and it does make queries behave differently. So if they start acting funky and you have checked one of these things, come back and revisit this. Selection behavior, this is when you lasso things in like form or report design. Do you want to have to fully go around to select everything, or do you want to just have something selected if you touch it? I like the default behavior. In fact, I love this default behavior. It's a real time saver. You can also choose a form template, a report template. These are handy. I don't have them set right here. When you are in a form or report and you're on the property sheet and you're on the event tab and you click in one of the properties and you click on the builder button do you want to be prompted with those three things or do you always want to use event procedures now me the reason I don't check this is because my habit is I type an open bracket and then press control F2 and it automatically takes me to a code sheet error checking this is totally up to you personally now I have unchecked a couple of these I sometimes uncheck more or less this is kind of up to you Proof Thing. I generally ignore this stuff, but you might want to look through it. Oh, except I don't ignore this. Auto-correct options. Correct two initial capitals. I'll uncheck that one because if I am typing a code and it has mixed case, I don't want access saying, oh, oh, there's two letters at the beginning. That's wrong. You know, it might not necessarily be. Capitalize first letters of sentences. I'll uncheck that one also because if there's a period, then Access thinks that was a sentence. Capitalize names of days. That's probably okay. Correct accidental use of caps lock key. Kind of like the first one with the two initial capitals. I generally don't really uncheck that, but if I'm typing a lot of codes, I might. And now replace text as you type. These can be really handy. So if you want a copyright symbol for instance and you don't know the ASCII code to get the copyright symbol you can just type paren c paren and it will automatically replace it. Same thing with registration and trademark and then come just a bunch of common misspelled words and what they really should be. I have really had no problem leaving this on so I'll say okay on this and go down to language. Language is for choosing the editing languages and the display and help languages. Client settings. Here's another biggie. Move after enter. I have changed this. The default, well now, didn't used to be, the default now is next field. Well if you're in the data sheet view and you press tab or shift tab, it moves forward or back one field. If you press enter or shift enter, normal, well what used to be normal and what is still normal in Excel is move down or up a cell. And that's what I like. I like to be able to press tab, shift tab to move left to right, enter, shift enter to move up and down. So I change this default to next record. Behavior entering the field, whether you want the whole field selected or just the start of the field or just the end of the field. Yeah, I leave it at the default, select the entire field because generally if I tab into something and I want something else to be in there, I'm not just going to edit it, I'm just going to place it. Arrow key behavior, that is whether it goes to the next field or the next character, generally leave it on the default. Cursor stops at first or last field. I, I don't bother to change this. Default find replace behavior. You may want to change this depending on certain circumstances. I generally leave it. 
these next three, oh boy, yeah, lots of macros, turn them off. And then they'll be unchecked. Access, I think, has uh, recently begun to kind of correct this. If you do a do command set warnings off, for instance, it actually maybe doesn't change these. It just temporarily sets them off. However, I always make sure these three things are checked because in the user interface, I definitely want these to be on. Default direction, this has to do with your language, left to right, America, Europe, a lot of countries write left to right, but there are languages like Arabic, for instance, that is right to left. So you can change this. General alignment, cursor movement, some of these I'm just going to skip. Show number of recent documents. This, you can bump it up. Oh boy, you can really bump it up high. And sometimes they go all the way to 50. I say, Say, yes, I want the max. But I tend to not open things from the recent document list unless it's just the last one. Because generally when I close an access database, I back it up and I change the name. So I'm not wanting to open from the recent documents because that won't have my new name. These next four status bars, show animations, action tags, kind of personal preference. Printing, I always change these defaults down to something really small. Well, now I have a laser printer so I can go pretty close to the edges of the paper. So I go down to a quarter of an inch just to save paper. Then on a case-by-case -case basis, I may bump it up. General, these things are kind of personal preference. Now let's go to advanced. Default open mode. Shared or exclusive? Generally shared is a better choice. Exclusive is kind of good in certain circumstances, especially for development. Default record locking, I always take it off. There are times where you may want to change the record locking. The reason I take it off is because if two people are editing the same record at the same time, whichever person saves the record first is not going to see a message, but the second person or the third person to save that same record is going to get asked, do you want to keep your changes or discard your changes? Now, if you keep your changes, that means you're going to wipe out whatever, whoever before you did. I always suggest discard your changes because you know what you just did. The first person that saved the record has no idea you're coming behind and you might wipe it out. Whereas you know what you did, you can just say, okay, discard them, go grab the record again, go make the changes again. That way, whatever the first person did is still there. Then we have uh, timeout information, DDE, command line arguments. If you want to open access, for instance, older versions and point to a workgroup file, you could do that here. I'll go down to customize ribbon. This is a great big topic and I won't go into it here, but this lets you customize things. Same thing with quick access toolbar. Now I've made a few changes to mine. I normally have a lot more, but I reset it to do a video where I showed just putting these icons on. And I always have my quick access toolbar below the ribbon because I got icons all the way across. Add-ins, I have Wayne Phillips VB Watchdog, which is really really, really a great error handler. I generally put error handling in all my procedures. Maybe I get a database and <laughs> it's a mess and I just want to put an error handler on the whole thing. That This is really a great thing to do. And then Trust Center. Okay, this is a big one. We need to talk about this. Let's go to Trust Center settings. I have all my drives trusted at the root which, by the way, you're not allowed to do anymore. You have to go down to at least one directory. But I have everything trusted at the root. I also recommend you check Allow Trusted Locations on my network because if you don't, then if you got a path that's not on your drive, it's just on a drive you can get to, 
Well, sorry to say, it ain't going to be trusted. So let's go to modify and see how these trusted locations work. If I were to add a new drive at the root, like right now, J, if I were to try and add that, and I always check subfolders are also trusted, it will, oh gosh, it adds it. Ah, well, uh, 2013 won't do this. It, it makes you go to at least one one level. And I always recommend anyway that you set up your own structure for storing data. And it's common we have stuff in desktop, my documents. Those are system directories. I don't recommend using them. I at least put a directory called data on the root and I hang everything below that. But as long as it'll let me trust the root, why not? So that's the quick tour through settings. There are other things in the Trust Center. Let me just come down to privacy options. These you're going to want to look through and just decide for yourself. Message bar. <laughs> I, I don't block anything for myself, but if you're rolling it out, you know, perhaps you might. DEP settings, this is personal preference macro, disable all macros with notification. That means if, for instance, you open something that's not in a trusted location, you'll get that little error message below the ribbon that allows you to enable the content. You know, personally, I think, why have an access database if you don't have code in it? So my, my thought is just trust it all because I'm not going to open something unless I know where it came from. ActiveX settings prompt is fine. Trusted documents here. If you don't want to go for trusted locations, you can trust specific documents. Same, you can trust specific publishers. So that kind of takes us through all of the defaults. Just a quick tour. I hope this makes your ride more comfortable.